here we go with the acid flow and what do we see well we've got the words of power words of destruction we've got parsing of an ipv6 packet specifically a echo reply that is like a ping reply so we come in with this echo which is attacker controlled and we have echo transport length and echo dev passed into an alloc well that should be a little bit suspicious to you but let's hold that thought for now and if you looked at the source code, you would have seen that, you know, the alloc I gave you does sort of some semi-initialization of the data structure that it allocates. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as semi-initialized, semi-uninitialized. Then we've got the still attacker controlled transport header plus some size. So that's going to be set as the payload. We've got the initialized version in the reply. So if you, again, if you looked at the alloc, you would have seen that was initialized as part of the alloc. So that's uh, semi-initialized. And attacker controlled payload length goes into the reply payload length. And here we go. Now attacker controlled transport header again, semi, or sorry, semi-initialized uh, reply transport header into reply header. Got some hard-coded initializations there that I didn't bother to show. Then we've got this attacker controlled reply ID, corrupting that, corrupting that. And where we're going is this right here. That to me looks like acid math, which is gonna be as bad as an acid bath. So that could potentially integer underflow. If an attacker set that to a small value that is less than this value, which is eight, that would integer underflow and turn into a large value Oh, just in time for a mem copy. Yes, an attacker controlled mem copy from attacker controlled data, all of a sudden magically turning into an extra large mem copy. That's no good. So let's imagine that we had set this transport length to one. That's going to lead to effectively an under allocation for what will become an over copy here. So under allocation, single byte there, and this is going to become FFFFFF nine bytes. So that's too big, that's going to buffer overflow. So what was the fix for this? Well, they said in the research, despite much effort from all parties, official patches were only issued for blah, which we don't care about, Pico TCP NG, and no official patches were ever issued for Pico TCP. So basically I cite the fix uh, in the additional reading where the Pico TCP NG Oh, you know, when you look at the project repository, there's, you know, the project name is still just Pico TCP. So it might not be exactly obvious that this T Pico TCP uh, Git repository is quote unquote Pico TCP NG. And this other one at three is the original Pico TCP. So it's kind of just a Russian roulette of whether someone goes searching for something and finds the fixed one or the unfixed one. Now, of course, it shouldn't be fully Russian roulette because if the person is doing their due diligence, they should see that the you know unfixed one is generally uh, you know sort of end of life and not actually being updated anymore. But you know who knows. So what was the fix for the integer underflow? Well, it was relatively easy. You basically just check the transport length, and if that is less than this, then that's going to be an error. And the fact that this is an unsigned int 16 it means that this is okay as a sanity check. Now I was looking through this and you know it occurred to me, well, I gave you the source code for the allocator and the allocator is taking a attacker controlled size and we talked in the intro section about bad malloc bugs. So I should probably, you know, do a quick double check for a bad malloc bug, even though the researchers didn't say anything about that. So what I saw was we've got a uint 16 size right there and then Conveniently enough inside the alloc, we've got some acid math. So that acid math also happens to be cast to a UN16. So this could potentially overflow if that size was, you know, four Fs, FFFF, then plus that, boom, 16 bit overflow. And then all of a sudden this turns into an under allocation. Same thing right there. And not the same thing right here. So to see why, we have to go look at the source code a little bit. It's going to turn out this is going to be cast to a 32-bit parameter to this function and therefore this would not actually basically it turns into a 32-bit before it's actually passed in therefore it's not going to overflow i mean that's my assumption it does kind of depend on the compiler but uh, usually that's going to be the case 
So anyways, the, the just the idea here is that these overflows in the 16-bit bounds are almost certainly going to lead to underallocation. And, you know, even simple statements like this might ultimately be uh, going, you know, over. And we'll see why because of that in a second. But let's uh, dig into this code briefly to see what actually is in effect. And this is where, you know, macros and what's if deft in and stuff like that really matters. Um, my personal favorite uh, IDE for looking at this kind of stuff is Eclipse, just because Eclipse does a really good job of parsing source code that it doesn't know anything about. So I used to use uh, Visual Studio as my primary editor. Then, you know, as part of my job, I'm looking at a whole bunch of different people's source code. And, you know, sometimes I have to go into a customer environment and I can't necessarily expect a certain setup or anything like that. So maybe I'm working on my Mac, maybe I'm working on their Windows or Linux machine. And, you know, Eclipse runs on everything. And so it's just much easier to uh, dump Eclipse on a box and then uh, dump the code into it. And Eclipse does a really good job of trying to figure out, you know, what macros are actually defined and undefined. So if we were to look at this uh, Pico IPv6 alloc with our 16-bit size, we can see that, you know, the size is used there, and these two things are actually uh, undefined at this point. They're if deft out. So in practice, you know, theoretically, assuming that someone hadn't actually specifically enabled it, these wouldn't ever be in effect. So let's consider this one first. And I said, you know, that's a 16-bit thing, and there's acid math here. But if we go to the definition of this, we'll see that it's ultimately taking a 32-bit size and therefore, that's it, the way it typically works with compilers. And, you know, this is probably officially the way it's supposed to work. And anywhere I've seen it not work this way is probably an error. But, um, you know, the fact that this is being passed as a 32-bit parameter means that it doesn't do the math in the 16-bit domain and then cast it to 32. It should be doing the math in the 32-bit domain, and consequently, it should not overflow. So anyways, Pico frame alloc is going to have a 32-bit size now. Go into that. And we see that the, the main thing about this is it's going to allocate this struct pico frame. We go to that. That's some really big old struct like so. But the interesting bit is going to be this buffer right here. The size that you pass into those allocs is ultimately uh, just used for this buffer length and the buffer allocation. So anyways, this pico alloc does a allocation of one of these structs. So, okay, everything inside the struct should technically be in bounds. That size that is attack controlled gets passed in, used as frame buff size. Uh, we scroll down a little bit, we see frame buff size used in a Z alloc, and that's used as the buffer field. So, like I said, that buffer right there is the attack controlled size buffer. But we look at the buffer, and interestingly, in here, that buffer is then used in all sorts of places to. Uh, initialize other pointers, start and net header, and net header is the one we're going to care about, but also things like transport header. So if this were being used in an under allocation and this were too small, then anything that was using any of these places that buffer is used could potentially lead to out of bounds writes. So let's back up a little bit. And here we are back in this alloc, and we said, okay, well, this is what's actually going to be used in practice. That's not going to overflow. So, you know, that's going to be safe. F is there. We've got transport header here, and then net header was the thing that would be used from a potentially underallocated thing. So if one of these other things underallocates, then something like this would be underallocated, which would mean that something like that would be, you know, automatically out of bounds once you uh, index past it. So let's just imagine that someone had actually used one of these things like the uh, six low pan support and let's try to understand what would happen here if this integer overflow had led to an under allocation so we got to go find this alloc and again uh eclipse does a really good job of you know if defing things out so just the fact that i if def this back in uh, just the fact that i defined it back in doesn't mean it's going to be found everywhere also what we're now dealing with here is a function pointer so, you know, we got to try to go find the allocation. We click through to here. Uh, great, we almost found it, but then we've got another function pointer and it doesn't know where that one's defined. 
searching around for that. Oh, can't find it. And at this point, you know, I go into thrashing mode and I try to figure out, okay, what's that and where's it's used? And, you know, I go search for all of that, not that, like so. I search for that and I'm looking for all sorts of stuff. And ultimately I, you know, gave up and I if deft in some more stuff. And we're just going to look at this as an example of that. So if this particular 802.154 or whatever it is, uh, you know, if that allocator was what was actually being used, then it would lead to this. This function would take that attacker controlled size still in the 16 bit domain. So, you know, we assume that would have integer overflowed and now it's going to be a small value. Then it's going to call pico frame alloc with headroom. And then that takes a 16 bit value, but that does eventually lead to this pico frame alloc again. And this is going to be the undersized thing plus a little bit of, you know, whatever offset. And so now this would be a situation in which the 32 bit size that's passed into this was actually, you know, too small for what the code is expecting. And so that will lead to situation of size being small, frame buffer being small, pico z alloc being small, buffer being small and then all of these various things being small. And if we back way up, then basically if that control flow were followed and that F were used, then all of a sudden this is going to be under allocated. So that is, you know, the possible bad malloc type thing on those paths. You know, is it real? I don't know. I didn't really look into it that deeply. Just, you know, had a had an inkling that there might be an issue there. And I can see from a quick skim that there might be an issue there. So ultimately, this might be a good place for you to go dig in and do some extra credit research and find out whether or not there are issues there. And if so, go submit them and get yourself CVE.